Hello, welcome back. So this lesson talks about signed numbers. In other words, we're going to start working with negatives. I know the last couple of lessons have been a little, shall we say, intense. Today hopefully will be rather quick and easy as we learn a little bit about what negative numbers represent and then we'll start using them. We've really gotten about as far as we can possibly get without using negative numbers in context. So it's time we started working with them. So here we go. Ready? With your guided notes. If we were to look at a number line, then the numbers to the right of zero, well, these are our positive numbers. And of course, the negative numbers are to the left of zero. A lot of people think about negative numbers as being the opposite of a positive number, and that's true. Opposites are numbers that are the same distance away from zero. Normally when people draw a number line to show negative numbers, they draw one that shows what we call integers. So let's get some space here, scroll this up a little bit. A number line that shows integers and it looks like this. So we have 0 sitting here in the middle, positive 1, positive 2, positive 3, positive 4, and so on, on and on forever. You remember that we talked about 1, 2, 3, and 4 being the natural numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 being the whole numbers. And if we work with the other half of the number line, we have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and continue on to the left, now we're showing integers. So integers are whole numbers. And their opposites. We said that opposites were numbers that were the same distance away from zero. So for example here at positive 3, we have 3 units away from 0. And here at negative 3, we have another 3 units away from 0. So 3 and negative 3 are opposites. Of course, we don't have to just put integers on our number line. We could put all sorts of things. Maybe we could count by tenths. So here we have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and so on. And of course, the negative numbers mirror this. Negative 0 0.1, negative 0 0.2, and negative 0 0.3. My decimal points don't seem to want to stick, do they? So opposites are numbers that have the same distance away from zero. The opposite of 32 is exactly what you think it is, negative 32. The opposite of 783, so we want to go on the other side of zero, is a positive 783. What's the opposite of zero? Well, that's just itself. Zero is the only number that is its own opposite. When you look at negative five, we can read this in two different ways. We can say negative five. Or we can read this negative sign here as the opposite of. So we talk about negative 5 as being the opposite of 5. So the opposite of is another way to interpret a negative sign. Which way we do it? 
depends upon context. All right, we have these things all the time in the English language. If you think about the word spelled W-I-N-D, maybe you read that as wind, maybe you read that as wind. It all depends on the stuff around the word. And the same thing's true for math. Sometimes it's convenient to talk about negative five, and other times it's convenient to talk about the opposite of five. Okay, so your job now is to pause the recording and see what you can do with parts B and C of example one as soon as you and I finish with part A. So here we go, part A. I want to read this first negative here, whoops, sorry about that, as the opposite of. The opposite of, and then I want to look at the stuff that's inside my parentheses and think of this as negative three. So the opposite of negative three should be a positive three. All right, you try the next two. Pause and come back when you're done. All right, let's see how you did. So the opposite of seven is negative seven. Oh my, C, what is this? All right, so let's see. Um, we learned with order of operations to start with the innermost parentheses first. So here we have eight. And now we have the opposite of eight, which is negative eight. But there's still a minus sign in front of that and another negative sign in front of that. So let's look at these two here. What is the opposite of negative eight? Well, that would be positive eight, but there's still another negative sign out there. So now I need the opposite of positive eight, which is a negative eight. I know right about now, at least some of you are saying, can't you just count the negative signs? And actually you can. Um, when you talk about the opposite of the opposite, you get back where you started. So every time we have two negative signs together, it's as if we didn't change at all. So the opposite of a negative is a positive, and the opposite of a positive is a negative. There we go, negative eight. On to the next page. Do you remember what the symbols for less than and greater than look like? I'll admit, I have trouble with this um, because it's out of context. However, if you take your left hand and hold up your thumb and index finger, you will see something that looks sort of like an L, but it's probably a little slanted. It's also looks like a little less than symbol. So I like to associate all the things that have L's in them together. Less than with my left hand looks like an L. The symbol for greater than goes the other direction. All right, so now what we want to do is compare some signed numbers. I know you know that two is less than seven. Uh, without looking up above, can you put the right symbol in here? A long time ago, when I was like in grade school, my teacher told me to imagine this. Ah, it doesn't want to draw it. As an alligator, maybe a Pac-Man eating the larger number. Eh, you know, whatever works. At any rate, seven is the larger number and two is less than seven. If we were going to look at this on a number line, we could plot two and seven. We wouldn't need all of the hash marks in between. We know that two is over here, three, four, five, six, and maybe seven is right about there. So two is less than seven. Let's try negative three and five. You probably already know that negative three is less than five because you would rather have $5 than be $3 in debt. That's certainly the better situation. All right, one, two, three, four, here's five. Negative one, negative two, negative three, there's negative three. Negative three is less than five. We're using the number line on purpose here because I want you to see something when we get done. Let's try comparing negative two and negative six. So let's put zero way over here so we make some space. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, 
negative 5, and over here is negative 6. All right, so the question is, what's the better situation? Would you rather be $2 in debt or $6 in debt? Yeah, I'd rather be $2 in debt. That is the better one, the larger amount, so to speak. I guess debt is debt, but even so. The real question is, what is the number line telling us? So what I want you to do is to take your pencil and come in and circle the smallest number for each pair. So for example here, with negative, uh, sorry, with 2 compared to 7, 2 is the smaller number. Negative 3 compared to 5, which one was the smaller number? Negative 3. Negative 6 compared to negative 2, which one was the smaller number? Hmm, well, 2 is greater than negative 6. That makes negative 6 smaller than negative 2. You can also think about it as the small end of the arrow points towards the small number. The wide, large end is by the large number. Either way, the negative 6 is over here. And so what I want you to notice is that the smaller numbers are all on the left. There we go. All of the less thans are on the left. So if we had a number line here with some mystery numbers, here's B and here's A, at first you might think that we couldn't tell which one is larger, but we can. We don't even need to know where zero is. What we know is that for a number line, the farther left we go, the smaller the number gets. In this picture, B is the smaller number. So here's our big deal. Maybe take your highlighter or circle this, put some stars by it, something like that. Big deal, big deal lesson here. If x is to the left of y on the number line, then x is less than or greater than y? Which do you think should be less than? All right, so your job here is to pause the recording and see if you can fill in the blanks with greater than, less than, or equals, whichever one makes the statement true. Pause and come back. All right, let's see how you did. Uh, comparing negative 8,000 to negative 30. Again, it's probably easier to think about debt, which is the better situation. I would rather only be in debt $30 than I would be in debt $8,000. But if I imagined a number line, negative 8,000 would be much farther to the left than negative 30 is. This one might be a little more challenging. Negative 11.2 compared to negative 11.3. Maybe we need a number line. Here's negative 11. Here's negative 11.1. Here's negative 11.2. And way over here is negative 11.3. There, now we can clearly see it. Negative 11.3 is to the left of negative 11.2. Zero compared to negative 57. Having no money is always preferable to being in debt. And now this one, hmm. Well, let's remember, the opposite of, that's how we'll translate this first negative sign, the opposite of, and then inside the parentheses, negative 12. The opposite of negative 12 is a positive 12. So the left-hand side of this is worth positive 12. The right-hand side is worth negative 12. And now we know which way the inequality goes. All right. The next thing we want to talk about is absolute value. Absolute value of a number measures its distance from zero. Not distance in terms of feet, but distance in terms of units. When we want to talk about the absolute value, we have vertical lines. So vertical lines like this. The absolute value of, and then whatever we're talking about, goes on the inside. Be careful to make these nice and tall. We don't want to mistake the lines being used in absolute value for negative uh, for ones. That looks kind of sloppy, so I'm going to fix this up. There we go, like that. 
So if we were looking at the absolute value of 3, we're saying how far away is 3 from 0, and 3 is 3 units away from 0. If we wanted to say the absolute value of negative 1.2, then we want to know how far away is negative 1.2 from 0, and it's 1.2 units away from 0. Right? When you throw a ball and you tell somebody how far you threw it, you don't think about the direction in which you threw it, you just measure the distance. And so you report that as something that is not negative. Even if you threw the ball backwards, you say you threw the ball backwards a certain amount. So absolute value is never negative. And that's because it measures distance or it describes distance. All right, so now it's your turn to try. Again, pause the recording and see what you can do with the next three examples. Okay, so now you're back. Let's check and see what you did. The absolute value of negative 62.4 is 62.4. The absolute value of 273 is 273. The absolute value of 0 is 0, because 0 is right on top of 0. It is no distance away. Okay, so true or false? The absolute value of a number is always the opposite of the number. Look back up at what we just did in example 3, and it's pretty easy to see that this is false. Some people say that the absolute value of a number is always positive, and that's false also, and we can see that here in C. Right, for B, we didn't change 273 to negative 273, it stayed the same. So what we're really doing is saying that the absolute value is just never negative. All right, let's try something else here, see if we can combine what we've talked about so far. Again, we want to fill in these blanks with greater than, less than, or equals to make something true. Pause the recording and see how you do. Okay, let's compare your answers with mine. Let's see. The absolute value of negative 8, that's worth 8. So when I compare 8 to 8, these are equal. The absolute value of negative 24 is 24. The opposite of negative 24 is also 24. Those are equal. The absolute value of negative 14 is 14. And when we compare 14 to 12, we use greater than. The opposite of the absolute value of negative 6. Ooh, okay. Let's just work inside the absolute value first. Let's just do this, this much. The absolute value of negative 6 is 6. Bring this negative sign right down. There we go. Negative 6 compared to 0, less than. So when might you see a negative number? Well, I suppose there's the obvious. There's always debt which I hope you never do see, but um, you know it's possible, right? Debt, certainly a case where we might see negative numbers. We also have seen um, in the wintertime temperatures below zero. We can talk about um, sea level. Elevations that are below sea level are talked about with negative numbers. For all of you football fans, you've heard negative numbers when they talk about loss of yardage. Things more related to heating and air conditioning. Um, let's see. 
in an AC circuit, right? This alternating current. we have negative voltage. Um, if we are rotating something and you go this direction, counterclockwise, this is actually a positive rotation. But if you go the other way, this is a negative rotation. You might also see a negative exponent when we start talking about very, very small quantities. We'll use them to uh, use the negatives to uh, write them in what we call scientific notation, and you'll see a negative exponent there. You may also see um, a negative sign used to describe the slope of a pipe coming away from a house. A lot of different times when you can see negatives. Other times, we create negatives because they're helpful. Whenever you have a benchmark that gets set, amounts below this benchmark get represented with negative numbers. So rather than saying temperatures below zero, we can talk about temperatures below normal. Whatever normal happens to be. Maybe you've got your house set for 72 degrees Fahrenheit, and then you start recording the temperature differences. Right? Then we would have positive 3 degrees, would be three degrees above normal, negative three degrees would be three degrees below normal. Um, those of you who are golfers, there's a benchmark called par, right? And if you are better than par, then you have a negative score, a certain number of strokes below par. We can also talk about the time before something happens. You might say negative two seconds. If you've ever watched a rocket being launched, you've heard them say, ah, T minus two and counting, something like that, talking about the time before that magic liftoff moment. All right, well, that's probably enough for right now. Go see what you can do with the homework, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.